Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Logic Medico. Today's topic for presentation is vocal cords and different position of the vocal cord and what happens in hoarseness, what is the etiology, what is the treatment aspect of hoarseness of voice. Subscribe to my channel if you are not yet done, kindly do it now and press the bell button to get the latest video updates alert. Vocal cords. What are these vocal cords? These are shelf like projections within our larynx or the voice box. There are two shelf like projections on either side of these walls. These are nothing but the upper part of the, you can see the crico vocal membrane. So, this is a cricoid cartilage. From this cricoid cartilage till the vocal cord, there will be a projection, there will be a membrane, there is the connective tissue thickening. And that upper margin of those crico vocal membrane forms the vocal cords. These vocal cords vibrates across this larynx whenever the air is passing through this larynx to produce speech or the voice. So this is how the two shelf like projection will be there which I was talking begins from the cricoid cartilage comes to here called crico vocal membrane. The upper portion of the crico vocal membrane is thickened to form the vocal ligament. The mucosa covering the vocal cord will be called as vocal folds. So this larynx is called the voice box because of this vocal cords. The approximation of these vocal cords and uh, is called adduction, movement away is called abduction and the vibration can happen in this vocal cord and it can get tensed, it is called tensor of the vocal cord, it can get relaxed whenever you want to speak softly. So all these movements are possible in vocal cord. The lung helps in pumping the air out of this respiratory tube of the larynx. When the air is coming out, then the vibrations of this vocal cord will produce the voice. Therefore, it is called the voice box. Okay. And other uh, aspects are the nasal cavity, paranasal air sinus, pharynx, oral cavity. All of them act like a resonator. They resonate the voice. Otherwise, there will be like this. The speech will be without resonance. Abrupt ending will be there. So, whenever you close your nostrils or you have a cold, even the other person will come to know easily because there is no resonance in the voice. Then coming to this soft palate, this tongue, teeth and lips are called as articulators. They help in articulating the words. Okay. So this vocal cord, the entire laryngeal uh, tube, entire respiratory tract as such is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium. Whereas this vocal cord is lined by stratified squamous epithelium because it is a variantary epithelium. The vocal cord as they vibrate, the epithelium can get torn off its place, right? So nature has provided a, such a thick epithelium, even if it tears, it will not harm the, the vocal cord as such because it has got multi-layered epithelium, stratified squamous epithelium. So the entire larynx has got rich amount of mucus producing cells, uh, goblet cells, they are within the epithelium. But this stratified squamous epithelium does not have lubrication. Therefore, nature has provided a space called as ventricle or sinus of larynx which are rich in mucus glands. They pour the mucus gland and shower this vocal cord area so that it remains moist. Can you see this reflection here of the light? That is because of the moistness in this area which is very important. Okay. So the movements possible in the vocal cord as already I mentioned. The two vocal cords coming towards the midline is called adduction. A-D-D-U-C-T-I-O-N. Adduction is the adducted position. The movement of the vocal cord away from one another is called abduction. A B D U C T I O N. Abduction. This is the abducted vocal cord. And there can be tension within the vocal cord. It can become stiff or it can become loose or relaxed. That is relaxation of vocal cord or laxity of the vocal cord. This epiglottis can move forwards and backwards. The forward movement will open the laryngeal inlet. That happens during deep breathing. So if you moves forward and more amount of air can enter the laryngeal inlet. When the epiglottis moves backwards, the array epiglottic folds will approximate, these two folds will approximate, epiglottis moves backwards, that closes the laryngeal inlet. This happens during swallowing. Whenever you swallow, when you swallow, that time the saliva or the food should not enter the larynx, right? It should not end up in the lung. Therefore, epiglottis slightly falls backwards, RE epiglottis approximates and there is a resulting closure of the laryngeal net preventing the food from entering into the larynx. Okay. Now come to the various positions of the vocal cord. There are five basic positions. 
is a median. Median means the vocal cord is come off to the midline. So there is no deviation of the vocal cord at all. So that is called median position, number one position. Number two, this is called paramedian position. So what is paramedian? Just away from the midline, 1.5 millimeter away. Next, cadaveric position or the intermediate position is 3.5 millimeters away from the midline. So that is also called neutral position. Then partial abduction, partial abduction from the midline is approximately 7 millimeter, this fourth position. 7 millimeter from the midline is partial abduction and complete abduction that is 9.5 millimeters that happens during deep breathing. <sighs> you are gasping for breath, that time it happens like this. this full abduction will happen so that more amount of air can enter your lung and you can breathe more oxygen and more oxygen reaches your blood. So these are the various positions but when does this happen? You understood that there are five positions, median, paramedian, intermediate, gentle abduction and full abduction. This is a distance from the midline, what is completely in the midline is median, just away from the midline paramedian, midway, in, midway between the full abduction and the midline it is called intermediate, that is why it is called intermediate. A gentle abduction, fourth position, okay, that is a slight movement away from the midline, gentle abduction, full abduction is the full maximum movement possible. So maximum movement possible is 9.5 millimeter from the midline. So when does this happen? In median position during phonation, I am speaking right. So now my vocal cords are close to one another, that is towards the midline. That is why phonation is possible, speech is possible. When I want to whisper, I paramedian position, I am whispering. Yeah, that is strong whisper. Now my vocal cords are paramedian position. Neutral, whenever you are uh, neutral position. So it is neither from phonation nor in whisper, it is called neutral position, that is third position. During quiet respiration, it will be like this, fourth position. <sighs> During deep inspirations, it will be in fifth position. Also, in case of recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis, unilateral paralysis, it can be either median or paramedian position or in case of both that superior laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal, both the nerves paralysis, it will be in intermediate position. That usually happens after death also. So therefore it is called cadaveric position. Okay, cadaver is the, uh, after the death, the human body is called cadaver. So paralysis of both the nerves will happen after death. Okay, so definitely it is cadaveric position. Paralysis of adductors that is, uh, will result in gentle abduction. Full abduction only happens in deep inspiration. So coming to the important topic, hoarseness of voice. By definition, any change in the voice so it, it becomes a rough, low pitched voice due to incomplete cooptation, tension, vibration of the vocal cords during phonation. Please note this. Any change in the voice, so it becomes rough and low pitched. Every person knows how their voice is for themselves. So it becomes different from the usual natural one. That means it is hoarseness. That results in incomplete cooptation, meaning movement in the vocal cord, incomplete tension and vibration in the vocal cord will be affected during phonation. Therefore, a change in the voice will happen that is called as hoarseness. What are the etiologies for this hoarseness of voice? We will see one by one. Congenital laryngeal web, unilateral vocal cord paralysis. These can happen from birth itself. During birth, in case of obstructed delivery, that time there can be injury by the forceps used also, resulting in damage to the vocal cord or unilateral vocal cord paralysis because of nerve involvement or there can be web from birth itself within the larynx which is altering the movement of the vocal cord. So congenital means from birth. Next coming to all the other causes are acquired means later in life we are, it is developed. And that the first and most, most important is traumatic cause. It can be external trauma, internal trauma, hydrogenic, this is doctor induced, inhaled foreign bodies and voice trauma. This is due to abuse of the voice. Sometimes the child accidentally inhales the foreign body into the larynx causing the trauma to the vocal cord. During laryngoscope or flexible endoscope, bronchoscopy, when, when, a, when a camera is placed inside the respiratory tube, that time it can damage. It is a tiny camera with a wire attached to it. It is a flexible scopes. So all these are traumatic causes. Next, inflammatory causes, acute laryngitis. Chronic non specific laryngitis, vocal nodules, vocal polyps, leukoplakia, white patch in the larynx. 
chronic specific laryngitis except laryngoscleroma. So inflammation of the larynx which happens on sudden onset is called acute. So of long duration is called chronic. Vocal nodules, you can see one of my video on vocal nodules. It's a, it's a singer's nodule or teacher's nodule. It's a bulge or a prominence on the pre edge of the vocal cord. Vocal polyp, polyp is finger like projection on the surface of the vocal cord which alters the surface of the vocal cord. White patch on the vocal cord, leukoplakia. It's a pre malignant condition, so you should be careful whenever you notice this. We should refer to the onco surgeon. Chronic specific laryngitis, again chronic inflammation of laryngitis due to a specific reason. Next etiology, laryngeal edema, it's called angioneurotic edema, that is the edema of the vocal cord which happens due to sudden onset due to hypersensitive reaction. Whenever a sting happens due to scorpion or a honeybee hmm, or a spider, at times suddenly some persons will choke, right? That is because of this kind of edema, laryngeal edema. Tumors, either a benign or malignant tumor of the larynx can also cause hoarseness of voice. Pseudo tumors, which are cyst and laryngoceles, collection of the mucus within the ventricle of the larynx or the sinus of the larynx, results in laryngoceles. It, uh, it appears like a tumor because it is a swelling. Cyst also appears like a tumor, but it is not tumor. Therefore, it is called pseudo tumors. Now, supply of this entire larynx is by two nerves. One, the superior laryngeal now, it splits up into internal and external laryngeal now. Internal laryngeal now goes inside to supply the mucosa up to the vocal cord. The external laryngeal now supplies only one muscle, cricothyroid muscle. Whereas all the other muscles are supplied by this nerve, which hooks around the arch of aorta and comes back. Therefore, it is called recurrent laryngeal now. Recurrent laryngeal now will supply all the muscles of larynx and the mucosa below the vocal cord is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve. Kindly note both the superior laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve branches of vagus nerve or the tenth cranial nerve. So if at all there is a damage to this nerve, so especially the recurrent laryngeal nerve on one side if it is damaged that results in vocal cord paralysis. So that is also a reason of hoarseness of voice. That damage can result in the recurrent laryngeal nerve due to some because this recurrent laryngeal is situated between the trachea and esophagus. So if there is any problem in the trachea or esophagus or in this groove, it can compress and damage this nerve. Or the thyroid gland, it is an endocrine gland. If at all the enlargement of thyroid gland happens, that is called goiter, it will press upon this nerve, pressure on this nerve causes paralysis of vocal cord. So other reasons are cricoarytenoid joint, that is arthritis in this joint, the joint which allows the movement between cricoid and arytenoid so that arytenoid can move across like this easily causing abduction or move towards one another that is called adduction so if at all arthritis happen in this joint is rare but possible that also results in hoarseness of voice then the junction between the nerve and the muscle is called neuromuscular junction if at all there are autoantibodies against that neuromuscular junction the neurotransmitter acetylcholine cannot act on the muscle no muscle contraction thereby hoarseness that happens in myasthenia gravis, it is an autoimmune disorder of neuromuscular junction. Next, hysterical aphonia, it is a functional, hysterical aphonia is a functional disorder, it can be treated easily. Under the treatment aspect without wasting much time, voice rest is the first and foremost treatment required for the patient. Avoid talking and shouting, do not whisper as this usually causes your vocal cord to strain your mouth. Drink plenty of hydrating fluids, fluids may relieve some of your symptoms and moisten the throat. Avoid caffeine and alcohol because these will dehydrate further and worsen the hoarseness. So caffeine means coffee, okay? Alcohol, you know. Use a humidifier to add moisture to the air. So this helps in opening up the airway and ease the breathing. Take a hot shower. The steam from the shower will help open up the airways and provide moisture to the laryngeal mucosa. Then stop smoking because smoking, the smoke coming from the smoking dries up and irritates your throat. Moisten the throat by sucking on lozenges or chewing gums like strepsils and all, okay. This stimulates salivation and helps soothe the mucosa of the throat. Eliminate allergen from the environment means use mask or prevent exposure to allergen or pollen grains because that will trigger and worsen the hoarseness. Don't use decongestion for hoarseness as it increases the dryness and worsens the hoarseness further. So avoid using decongestion nasal sprays. Like and share these videos with your family and friends. If you like this, kindly subscribe. And press the bell button to get the latest notification. Do not forget to press the thumbs up button. 
if you have learned something from this video kindly share this with your friends so that allow them to learn as well thank you once again for seeing this video